everyone and welcome to my live stream today of this beautiful, oh, I hope it's beautiful, <laughs> um, Glowbird. That's what I've given the name to it. This is very impromptu and also I've had an absolute disaster trying to set this up. This was in fact on a tripod, obviously. And as you can see, it's very shaky because I'm holding it with my hand. <laughs> and I'm not sure also that I'll be able to see your comments if you do happen to comment on here because unfortunately my um, phone is a little bit nuts at the moment so I don't exactly know what's happening but I will start painting and hopefully something good will happen and perhaps I will learn how to do this properly. Now a funny story about this camera is that I actually had a tripod for it but unfortunately um, something went very wrong with the tripod and so I'm just kind of like desperately holding this with my hand. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can see this video so that I can rotate the camera. Oh god here we go. Uh, <laughs> so I can rotate the camera. Here we go. I can And I think it should have re rotated. <laughs> Apologies for these absolutely poor, poorly managed live streams so far. Okay, here we go. I think I think it's happening, and it's in this like. Goodness me. So here we go. We're going to start painting, and this um, unfortunately this won't rotate so I'm just going to try one more time and then I'm going to stop being annoying and actually get down to talking through this painting because <laughs> otherwise I'm just like sort of fiddling around with this ridiculous um, portrait thingy. <laughs> you can tell that I haven't streamed live for ages because when you haven't streamed live for ages you don't know what to say on camera you're just so busy fiddling around with how, how to actually work the stupid thing. Um, but there we go. This is the most disastrous looking vertical, <laughs> vertical um, production of my painting here. But I'm just going to start painting anyway, because this is um, actually a bird that I started a few days ago. And um, I'm really, really, really enjoying painting it. Now, this is really rare for me because normally I get really frustrated with my, with my art. Um, so it's quite unusual for me to actually be enjoying myself doing this. However, I've been, here's my palette by the way, so I'm just gonna move across to the side so you can see what mess it is. Um, this is made out of a kind of like old glass frame and I know that you're supposed to modify your frame to make it look more attractive, but as you can see, I literally just took the back of the frame and then, <laughs> and then I started using it. So, hmm, it wasn't very well thought out, but, and it wasn't very kind of, what's the word, professionally done because it's literally just the frame. That's why you can see this like wooden thing here. So here we go anyway, let's go back to the birdie. So normally when I start my paintings, I get really, really frustrated with them quite early on. And um, it's kind of surprising that I'm actually enjoying doing this because it's a, like a very rare thing for, like, for it to happen. Most of the time when I start painting, I'll enjoy it probably initially. And then like, I've always find the beginning and ends of paintings to be super exciting. Like when you start a painting, you always get really excited and then you like map out the composition really quickly. But then soon enough, after a while, it starts to become more and more frustrating if it's not coming out the way you want it to. And this probably won't be a surprise to you if you've seen my like videos before. Hello Kiva, art and craft. Oh, thank you so much. It's lovely to see see you on the little chat thing. The chat is not working on my phone, which is not which is not a surprise because uh, as you can see I've got some technical problems, but it is working on my laptop. So let's just hope that the internet doesn't cut. If it does, then again, I wouldn't be surprised considering how everything has gone wrong since I started this. And actually I tried to stream about an hour ago and 
it didn't happen because my tripod <laughs> literally broke. So there we go. Um, so here we go. Sometimes you shouldn't necessarily trust the good reviews on Amazon because that tripod is particularly for a phone. And I thought, oh, that'd be amazing because I can just set it up next to my painting. It'd be perfect. And um, as you can probably tell, it was pretty useless. It had very flimsy legs. And so whilst I tried to like... Um, attach my phone to it, it just kept falling over. And I did once manage to use it and it managed to film okay, but I had to like put my arms around it and hug, almost like hug it whilst I was painting <laughs> so that it didn't fall over. So yeah, there we go. That is genius. That is my tripod or rather RIP because I'm pretty sure it's broken. So there we are. What can you do? Sometimes you trust Amazon, but sometimes you just can't trust them. So I'm taking a little bit of this green gold here. It's a pretty pricey color. If you look at um, painting paint colors, that and that is not even green gold. <laughs> that's actually one of the browns. I actually think that's um, not burnt sienna, burnt umber. That's burnt umber. This is the really expensive color, this one here. You wouldn't think it, but Green gold is a really expensive colour and actually it is beautiful. Like when you um, shear out green gold, it really looks amazing. It is amazing to glaze with. So I'm kind of like part way in constructing the story of this uh, little bird. But I don't know if anyone else is like this, any other artists, but I very often think of the ideas for the painting whilst I'm painting. So I'll have an idea of a story initially, but then as the painting unfolds, I will start to come up with even more ideas. So this one is kind of like half a story. So I could probably make another video just talking about the story if anyone is interested. And I'm just placing, I'm doing these sort of like translucent fruit. And this is a pear, but as you can see, it's tiny. It's just like a mini pear. And um, I kind of get some green in there. Okay. And I do really find birds amazing to paint. I hardly ever paint them. I'm more of a like, I don't know, wild animal or cats. I mean, I think you probably know I'm absolutely obsessed with cats. Cats are really easy to paint for me because I've painted them so many times. So a bird's a little bit more of a challenge because I don't paint them as often. I don't know whether moving back and forth between my palette and the painting is going to make this even worse quality than it already is, but I think, <laughs> I think it might as well, you know. Let's, let's really make this like the worst quality video ever. And so here we go, I'm just like sort of dabbing along. I feel like a lot of other people who live stream, their live streams always look mega professional. And then I come on here and like wreck everything. <laughs> and then it's like super unprofessional. And I like my my phone, ca my camera phone uh, does it wrong. What? My, the camera on my phone, I'll finally get that. The camera on my phone doesn't even fill the screen at the moment, which is a bit of a disaster because it really should. And I've obviously done something wrong in the settings, but anyway. And this is a little apple, in case you didn't know, because it doesn't really look like an apple. And um, I'm just like mixing the colours in a bit. I am not using a wood panel here. I don't know if you know this about me, top secret, but I actually used to love painting on canvases. And then I switched to um, wood panels, which are also great, by the way. I do really enjoy them. They're like really, really smooth and really beautiful to paint on. But I've, I have been feeling a longing to going back to canvases. So this is me going back to my roots. And so this is, a, this is a canvas. This is linen, my absolute favorite so far. Linen is my absolute favorite to paint on, but it's very expensive. And it's also difficult to find, particularly the type of linen and the prime primer on the linen and all that type of jazz. And I do feel this is a little bit of a whinge, but I do feel like in the US, there are lots better kind of affordable 
um, materials for artists, whereas in the UK, it's sometimes very difficult to get hold of things. You can get hold of really amazingly quali amazing quality materials, but you can't get hold of very high quality materials at a cheap price. <laughs> So everything is super expensive if you want to get really good quality materials. Whereas I think that in the US, prices are a lot more competitive. And also I feel like they do a better job of basically telling you what the toxicity level is in what you're buying, which is something that I feel it does lack slightly in the UK. But other than that, I mean, all the, the actual quality itself of the materials that we get in the UK is actually very high. And I probably shouldn't complain because I'm sure that in other countries they don't get as great um, materials as we do. But I do think there are some more affordable options in the US. So there we go, there's another little winch. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of like, <laughs> this wasn't really supposed to be a live stream. I have actually edited the full video of this, but I really thought that it would be nice to just come on here and do something live because I've got this new live feature on my phone, but I didn't realise how absolutely useless it is. Um, I just kind of fooled myself into thinking it was something really jazzy when in actual fact it's just as bad as the webcam on my laptop. In fact, I think it's probably even worse. So, <laughs> so there we go. And I'm just glazing here. Oh no, I'm not. <laughs> I tried, but failed. Just gonna take off any excess of my brush. And I'm just going to dip in. So I'm using, the medium I'm using is Gal Kid. Gal Kid gel, absolute heaven to use. And I'm not sure that I'll ever stray from this. I've tried so many other ones and I do, I do really like them, but this is probably my absolute favorite. But it's really, um, I mean, with, when it comes to the gambling ones, you can't really go wrong. They're all really amazing. Plus with the paints as well, paint is really beautiful. I'm using gambling paints. I also really like the fact that, um, I've mentioned this before on my channel, that they've got a lower toxicity level, which is something that I really uh, strive for when I'm buying materials. I always look at that, the ingredients now, and trying to make sure that everything is um, a little bit better because I paint so much. And if you're painting a tart and you really don't want to be breathing in, um, it's just kind of like, as well, it's a little bit off-putting if you've got like really stinky stuff because it just doesn't make you feel like painting for as long. Whereas if what you're using doesn't have a scent or as much of a scent, it does encourage you to continue painting and you just sort of get lost in your work really. And this is a little rose. Um, so I'm just sort of really delicately doing this. This is a medium grain that I'm using and it's not something that I'm necessarily used to. I'm normally used to canvas that has a more fine grain to it. Um, so it's a little bit unusual for me. I feel like this pair could be a bit more exciting. So I'm gonna go back to this. It's a little bit more unusual for me. So um, it does take, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, obviously if you're buying, canvases and so forth you, what you really want to do is to match the grain to how you, you like to paint so if you like to paint really delicate um, detailed work then you'd really want to sorry I'm just trying to mix this color so it just gets perfect sort of perfect shade if you really want to find the right canvas for yourself you have to sort of feel about what type of paint things you like to create so say if you really like to do abstracts the the grain might not matter quite as much but if you're somebody who loves to do really detailed paintings then obviously you'd really like to have a canvas that has a really fine grain because then you can get all the really amazing details and that's really important it's so important to find the right surface finding the right surface to paint on is just as important, if not more important than finding the right paint, to be honest, because it's almost like if, if you paint something on, on some really cheap, rubbishy, say if you paint on like a piece of paper, which is kind of how a lot of artists, I know some people would laugh, but a lot of artists start out the way, that's how I started, was just to grab the first piece of paper that I could find and start painting on that. And so if you start painting on paper, um, 
the paper will just start to really absorb what your your paint and it will absorb the medium and everything will sort of sink through and it'll be really kind of hard to get the type of finish that you want. So thinking about primers and grains and grades as well of canvases, it's all very important. And also if you don't want to, say for example, if you're painting on linen, you don't want to get a natural linen because it just will be too rough. So obviously then you have to start thinking about primers. Some people love acrylic primer, acrylic gesso, and some people love oil ground, oil oil primed rather. <laughs> you can get oil ground. I believe oil ground is by Gamblin. You can get all different types of oil primers. And um, it really depends on what you prefer. And there are some huge devotees of gesso. And I think that gesso is fantastic for um, acrylic painting and it's also really good for oil if that's the type of surface that you like to paint on there are some people who hate to paint on acrylic gesso I have met, also, I've met artists who when I've mentioned that I was using gesso boards for my oil paintings were quite horrified which is so funny and uh, I don't actually have a like a like a a feeling either way. I use both. I use oil primed sometimes, and I use the gesso board sometimes, and I use linen sometimes. Oil primed linen, and I don't really have like I don't really think that there is one that I could say oh this is like so much better. But it just depends on what you like. It depends on the type of finish you like, and it depends on the actual feel that you enjoy. Uh, they're both very different feeling when you're painting on and they both give different finishes but if you're talking about um, the actual kind of gesso boards and the ampersand a smooth primed I think it is I've used those quite a few times as well um, any any canvas that is primed with gesso if it's done properly and like several times for in my personal opinion I don't think that you will get an inferior surface. I think it will be a really good surface and I really enjoy painting on those type of surfaces. And I think that as long as they've been primed properly, to me, I find them really nice and they're really smooth. And uh, yeah, they're really, really good. And it's what I enjoy. So I think a lot of other artists enjoy it too. I don't think there's such a thing as the right or the wrong way. It's just it's just your way. No, what's that? What's that quote from Alice in Wonderland by the the Red Queen? I can't remember exactly. Um, not your way, but my way. <laughs> so it's anyway. It's anyway. Yeah. So I don't think there is such a dictatorial. Uh, there should be a dictatorial way of looking at art. I think it should be whatever makes other people uh, makes you and other people feel comfortable. So I would say I am for me personally. Linen has the edge over any other surface, but because it's so expensive, I don't always use it. Uh, that's just because it suits my style. Um, I think it suits my style more than any other surface, but that doesn't mean to say it's anywhere in any way superior to any other surface, because it's not what I think. And I've used wood as well, and I think that feels amazing. And it also creates beautiful paintings. Really, ultimately, if you're using a high quality surface, regardless of what it is, whether it's wood or linen or cotton canvas, if you're using a high quality surface, then it really, it's up to you to make a good painting. And so the surface can only do so much. Of course, once you've got a good surface, then you're in the best position to, to make something good. Like, as you can see here, I've made quite a few muck-ups. I'm not actually cleaning my brush properly because I'm holding this in my hand. Oh, excuses. But... Oh, I placed this here, but you know, I only have myself to blame if this all goes wrong because I'm using such a nice surface, right? <laughs> and just trying to make this shape look good. So I hope everyone is well, whoever ends up watching this. I don't know exactly how long this is, how long this is before my camera battery runs out but I will try my best I'm so glad that I finally got to live stream though because 
I feel like once you're out of touch with live streaming, you do start to get quite nervous about live streaming. And while I'm, I'm relatively okay, but I am a little bit concerned about the quality of this, <laughs> this video. I'm really concerned about the quality of the video, the actual video itself. But I think when you're out of practice with anything, you sort of, you sort of get, oh, hello. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much. I'm so glad. Oh, it's so nice to see you too. <laughs> Thank you. Hooray. Yes, I'm trying to work through the technical problems and create some something interesting on this painting. So I really do hope you enjoy it. And I hope you're all having a really good weekend. I was watching some tennis as I was taking a break from the painting. But then I got back to painting, so <laughs> it was like only momentary. And I believe it's the final tomorrow. And um, I didn't get tickets for Wimbledon, um, sadly. I really hope that someone feels sorry for me out there. <laughs> I haven't had tickets for, to Wimbledon for a very long time. I feel like it's become so competitive to get tickets now. But I hope everyone's enjoying the sunshine. It's super hot here, but it's cloudy, at least where I am anyway. And so, oh, I just pa almost painted over the moon. You see, I got so carried away with talking. If you make a mistake like this, it's quite easy. In oil paints, I've got to say, a lot of people think oil paint is really, really difficult. But in actual fact, what's great about it is you can just totally erase. Oh my gosh, I've actually got a hair on my brush. I honestly think that if everything is kind of like going wrong at the moment, I need to cut out saying like so much. People keep telling me off, like, what's happened to your vocabulary? <laughs> so the one thing great about oil paints is that there's still a rogue hair. Okay, let's just, I'm just whacking my brush right now. Okay, so one thing great about oil paints is that if you make a mistake such as this, then you can just dip your brush in the good old, here we go. So dip your brush in this, this actually looks like such a mess close up, it's quite intriguing almost. So you dip your brush in just a little bit of medium. I actually took way too much there, but you know, I only have one hand right now. And then you go in with whatever color you want to go into. Now what I'm really lucky actually that I marked up the moon because in actual fact, this is um, the white and white is always really good because you've got an, it's very opaque. So I'm just gonna go over it and just go over it again and it will save it all, okay. My brush, I don't know whether you can see right now, this is actually quite terrible why I'm doing it, but I will go over it later. And actually this is very good because it gives me a magnifier because I can see that I haven't painted either of these birds properly so I can um, go back to painting them. So I don't know whether you can see, I'm very close up now and you can see the actual texture of the linen, which is quite amazing, I think. Um, I really love when you go up to, when you look at old paintings and you can see the texture of the canvas. I think it always looks really like just, I don't know, there's something about it so magical and you can almost feel like the artist has been there. This sounds so pretentious, but you can, you can feel like the artist has been there with their brush and they've been sweeping all over it with their paintbrush. I think it's just, yeah, really great. Um, and so, yeah, so there you go. You just work over it and it's back, back, to, back as good as new. It's a great thing about oil paints. And I think that a lot of people are very fearful about oil painting, but really it's a lot easier than, than people think. There, there are some difficulties, but it's a lot easier in the sense that it, um, it shouldn't be feared. And the difficulties only come with, you know, I think probably becoming more and more ambitious. Because sometimes when you're ambitious and then you sort of want to create certain things in your art and it has to look a certain way. With oil painting, it can be a little bit of frustra frust frustrating process because it doesn't always go the way you want it to. But again, you can keep painting over it until it does look right. So it's really great that way. Also, what's a, another really nice thing about oils is that, oils is that it does remain wet for quite some time. And so you can manipulate the paint a lot. And that's, it always, it's actually hugely beneficial. I think that uh, it's a misconception that paint that stays wet for a long time is therefore terrible paint. 
because you want it to dry and then, you know, sell it or whatever. But it's great to have paint that doesn't dry so fast because if you've placed your paint and you really want to blend with another colour, if the paint remains wet, it's just so easy to blend it in with another colour. You don't get that kind of luxury with some other paints. But I do think it's nice that more and more people, at least on YouTube, I think, and no, and uh, that I've met are taking up oil painting. So it's not completely gone. Sometimes it makes people sad that people don't really do it as much as other kind of mediums. It's declined so much over the years, which is a shame. It's such a, such a magical art form. And it can create magical paintings. I mean, look at this. Like, only if you go up closely to the paint, you can see, like, okay, it looks quite gross. But <laughs> if you just, like, see how close up how the glazes look when you glaze and how translucent that is. I mean, that just looks amazing to me. I'm sure there are people watching, whoever watches this, are just like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? But no, it makes sense to me, and that's the important thing, right? Okay, so I'm gonna keep working out on working on the sky. And this painting was only supposed to be, it was only supposed to take me a couple of days because in actual fact it's quite a small canvas, it's only about 10 by 8. And so I was planning to get this done relatively quickly. I'm trying to just pull out oh, hello, hi Chrissy! Chris is amazing. Hiya. It's so lovely to see you on here. I'm just doing this. Yes, as I was saying, I was just doing blending the sky. See, Chrissy knows all about live streaming. So I've just been ranting, Chrissy, about how I've been having such a difficult time to get my lives set up. And you're just like an absolute expert at live streaming. If anyone here has not seen Chrissy's channel, please go and see it. She is absolutely amazing and I just love her paintings. They're so beautiful. And actually Chrissy painted birds recently, which I'm going to see later on. I haven't had a chance, this, like this whole week, I haven't managed to catch up with anyone's work, which has been such a shame. But soon I will be there catching up with everyone, which is really good actually. It's really nice to stream and then catch up with everyone's work because... One thing I'm really quite rubbish at, rubbish at is, <laughs> oh, you're most welcome, Chrissy. One thing I'm quite rubbish at, and I don't know if anyone else can relate, um, is I'm rubbish at editing. <laughs> or rather, I'm extremely slow. And so doing live work is really great because at least it takes out that ele element to it. And I do love also seeing people online and chatting as well. It's really nice. And this paintbrush that I'm using right now is so bust. It's so old <laughs> and it's um, it's like, it's funny because Chrissy's, uh, Chrissy made a video about going to this wonderful art store near where she lives and it just made me feel like going out and just buying a ton of things. I know, I love the art community as well. I love the live community as well. And it's true because you get to connect with so many different people just in that moment, you know, when everyone is, when they are particular, like walking, like browsing online or they might be checking their account and then all of a sudden you can see them and I think that's amazing. But yeah, Chrissy made this amazing video about going to her art shop and I just loved it because it made me want to buy absolutely everything. And it also reminds me so much of when I go to art shops and I just like, Every, all the supplies to me just look so good and I just think oh I just want everything and her video was amazing because it's so much nicer than I mean that we do have some really nice art stores in London but the the majority of them are pretty small actually so that was like yeah so Chrissy's video was of this gigantic art shop. It was like, what's it, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? I felt like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I it was like looking at this whole shop full of chocolate, but the chocolate is actually art supplies. <laughs> so yeah, that would be my idea of heaven, I think. I'm sure all artists can totally relate to that. And yeah, there is one in London that I go to regularly and it's really small. Um, and so, yes, it is huge. So. If, if I had a place like that near me, though, I would not, 
I would be bankrupt. <laughs> I wouldn't even be able to cope with it. I'd just be in there all the time. They'd get annoyed with me. They'd probably kick me out. Sometimes, I mean, last time I went to the art shop, I went to Cassart like a week ago. <laughs> I know, it's so funny. I went to Cassart about a week ago. Was it a week or a week? No, two weeks ago. And they were like, I was in there for an hour and it's like really, it's a really small store. So they, I think the arts like um, assistants, not arts assist, the shop assistants kept looking at me thinking, why is she still here? <laughs> Everyone else came in, asked something and then left within like five minutes. And I was still hanging around. It just took me so long to decide. And also there's just too many things. I found so many new things in lots of little corners that I'd never seen before. And I was very intrigued by it all. And so I went much, I like, I literally bought my stuff five. <laughs> yeah, they probably did think I was, sh I was a shoplifter. In fact, I'm almost positive they think that. I think they know me now, though. I think that one of them recognises me because I've been there so many times. They're probably like, oh, her again. Like, she's always hanging around. <laughs> she's always hanging around and then she, like, buys one thing. <laughs> it's just that I have so many ideas when I go into an art shop. I think, oh, I'm just going to get one thing and then I'll leave. But then I find... You know, especially it's a thing also about, no, I didn't have my wig on. <laughs> I should have. I should have had my wig on. That would have really scared them. They probably would have been like, oh, my goodness, this is someone from a circus or something. I should have gone in my wig. Maybe I should do that next time. I'm quite, I find it quite funny freaking them out. But yes, I I wasn't wearing my wig. Surprisingly, I was dressed in normal attire and they still thought I was a weirdo. <laughs> but <laughs> but um. It's also a funny thing about being on YouTube as well, because when you go to art shops, you start to get ideas about making videos. Like, well, shall I make a video where, where you re I review this or that? And so you get these kind of like inspirational ideas. And so it's great. I think it's it gives them it gives them customers because otherwise, <laughs> otherwise their shop is boring. Let's be honest. So there's that one, and there's also I believe Russell and Chapel, that's not too far from Oxford Street. And I'm always in there as well, but that's a lot harder to hang out in because it is virtually empty because I think they have a lot of um, online uh, business and they're like a proper, proper art shop, like proper, proper, much like the one you went to, Chrissy. Uh, they do, they actually mount the, their canvases and stretch stretch the canvases there and they've got all very specialist products so um hello sandy's kitchen hello hi it's nice to see you uh people who are chefs on um youtube really inspire me it always makes me feel like i wish i could cook and although i can cook i am not a good cook oh that's amazing chrissy well, you have to, if you can film inside the warehouse, that would be absolutely brilliant if you're able to. Or just tell us what it's like if you're not able to. That would be really interesting. I've never, I don't think I've ever been to a warehouse um, or at least not an arty warehouse. Um, I've been to a warehouse. <laughs> but not, um, wow, oh my gosh, I'm really looking forward to that video. That would be brilliant. Um, so everyone, this, watch out for Chrissy's new video. Coming soon, rather, coming soon, because as soon as you go and see the warehouse and then, yeah, you'll have to show us. That would be that would be really exciting. I myself have not been to one. In fact, I was bugging an art store this morning about um, I think I was like whinging to them about having not having the right canvases that I wanted. <laughs> I was like, why don't you stop cleaning? And so they have it in their warehouse. And I unfortunately, it was really far away. But yeah. Oh, that would be really good. Chrissy. I will really look forward to that one. And really excited for you. That sounds really fun. It, it will be really, really good. Because it's like a mystery, isn't it? Those warehouses. What happens? What goes on in there? <laughs> you never know, do you? It always feels like, oh, they say things like, oh, we, sorry, we only stocked that in our warehouse. And you think, where is this magical warehouse? What happens there? <laughs> so soon we will know. And, um, Oh yeah, that'll be really, that'll be a really awesome video. So I'm just shading here and these little flowers, I don't really know what they are. And they're sort of little blobs of something. They were kind of supposed to look reflective um, and they've got like a little bit of like pink in the middle and then some blue here. 
And they just kind of formed. Like, I don't know, I wasn't really sure what I was doing with them. But I kind of think they look cool. I was going to change them into flowers and then I never did. So they're kind of just there, really. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Chrissy. You're too kind. I'm so glad you like it. To be honest, uh, this is one of the rare moments where I actually feel like the progress on this painting is going quite well. But ordinarily, I I don't really like my work. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm glad you like the flowers. They took forever, and in actual fact, they're not quite finished. Um, but I can't. I'm finding it really a little bit difficult to get the details on this canvas because it is a little bit more of a medium grain so I'm doing my best but we'll see what happens eventually they'll be okay but because <laughs> from far away I think they look fine but close up I think you can really see that they're oh what did I just do <laughs> and so um but I'm very kind of you to say that I'm just going to try and remove this little bit of nonsense here. So here we go. I'm just going to show you my palette again. It's really looking, it, I don't normally, I have to confess, I don't normally work in this such a messy way. Um, I normally keep it very kind of tightly done so I'll only use maybe a quarter of the palette but I've actually been painting all morning and so it's become a wreck <laughs> like this but ordinarily I will um try to kind of clean this up mid-session and then I will start again on it it's really good about glass palettes is that you can wipe them and you basically can wipe all the paint off the only issue though is that because it's quite hot here at the moment some of the paint has been sticking and drying to the surface um so I don't know if you can see here but it's actually becoming quite hard to to get off so it's starting to um stick to the glass so I'll probably have to scrape it yes it's a, well it's actually a glass frame isn't that um you know it's not the the, like the expensive ones you can buy from the shop I became very DIY I'm trying to like I'm literally trying to save money in every possible way now because the oh hi hi Joni oh thank you so much thank you for your wonderful comment that's so kind I'm so glad you like the colors yes it's um I tend to use these types of colors a lot but I found that working especially glazing with them like sort of pink pinkish tones green and blue and particularly this blue that I have which is radiant turquoise I love mixing this into everything and this is actually let me show you some of the colors yes Chrissy you're right you know what I have actually um I actually probably am going to put a backing on it in case I cut myself because I am quite um, accident prone <laughs> and I actually this is one of the reasons why I didn't get a glass palette for a very long time because I was really worried I was going to cut myself but I've left the outside frame on so I'm hoping that oh, it should be okay so these are the colors this is the gambling sorry it's a little bit revolting like around here all paints tend to go like this don't they like round the rim I always try and keep my paints really like pristine but that like crustiness always happens and then you show someone your paints and they're like what is that but um this is the radiant turquoise by gambling and it's the I think it's series two <laughs> yeah gunk <laughs> It's true. I know. I wish there was a way that it didn't happen. I had. A, I have actually cleaned most of my paints recently, and they've become nasty again. So there we go. Um, and so that's one of them. And then I've got. Uh, I'm using this as well. Now this I'm just using to mix with the white. In actual fact, this is naphthol scarlet. This is. I believe this is a newer color. I could just be making that up, but I feel like I haven't seen that until relatively recently when I went to um, the bigger art store and I bought, I bought it. Um, and that's really, it's beautiful. It's so pigmented and so vibrant. And um, it's just, it's just amazing. You can get some beautiful pinks. And sometimes I buy a pink separately. I mean, in this case I haven't, cause I've got two really beautiful reds. There's another one I really want to show you, but I can't reach it. And I think that I'm going to drop my phone in a second. Um, but yeah, there are some really nice ones in in this particular range. And this is a semi-transparent, semi and I like to use the sort of transparent and semi-transparent colours because I always think it 
is great for glazing. But it's funny because you can sort of cheer out a lot of the colours, even if they are opaque. You just sort of have to be a bit nifty with your... <laughs> There's a, that, that rogue hair is back on my brush. So hopefully I'll be able to do more live streams soon. Um, I haven't really uh, got a schedule, but <laughs> yes, exactly nifty. <laughs> I haven't exactly got a schedule yet, but I do want to get a schedule. And when I do, I hopefully will be able to do more live streams. And I hopefully also will be able to work out how to do the full screen on this. It's so frustrating, but... Um, Hi, Lil. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm just painting flowers at the moment and having a lovely chat with everyone. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad you like the painting. That's so kind. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I know. Isn't it terrible? Like my phone is just an absolute nightmare at the moment. <laughs> I don't know. I honestly thought that it would be better than my webcam, but actually my webcam is better than my phone, which is kind of like the, the unusual irony. But at some point I'll get it sorted. Yeah, I tried. That's the thing. I tried to turn my phone, but it won't allow it. <laughs> because in the initial settings, I pressed portrait which was, that was the mistake. It was the biggest mistake that I made because I pressed portrait and now it won't rotate it. So when I rotate it, it still comes out as a portrait, but like a really thin slither of a film. <laughs> so when I managed to sort out the settings next time, I was just destined for disaster because this whole day has just been like that, I think. But um, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out next time. Oh, there we go. Yep, I locked it on portrait. You're exactly right, Chrissy. And now they've condemned me forever. For eternity, I shall be <laughs> forever making vertical videos <laughs> like a sad <laughs> Goodness me. There we go. <laughs> oh, before, in fact, <laughs> thank you, Lil. You know, before I go, in actual fact, I wanted to mention that um, I had a really interesting time at uh, the Pin uh, Pintura Rapido. I think I actually mentioned it in on my Instagram, but I didn't mention it here or on YouTube. And I wanted to make a video about it, but I never got round to it, uh, which is basically a plain air competition that I did a few weeks ago. And it was really amazing, such an amazing experience. I met so many wonderful artists. And in case if... Um, People don't know anyone here, um, not anyone here right now, but if anyone's watching this later on, if they don't know what that is, it's this um, painting competition that happens uh, in, I think it happens all across the world in actual fact. But the one that I went to was the one happening in London. And it was basically to create a painting in plein air. And I'm not really a plein air painter. I've I must admit, although I can obviously do it because I think every artist is able to, to paint outside, but it's not something I do regularly. So for me, it was kind of like, oh, it was a bit of a, an eye-opening thing. But I have done it before, so it wasn't too stressful. But it's a, a competition that runs over a few days and you essentially have about eight hours to start and finish painting of London. And it's really a great experience. I had such a wonderful time. It was very unique though, because having to paint under time pressure like that is uh, really uh, difficult, <laughs> especially for me. And what was really nice is you got to exhibit your work at the end and that was really wonderful. It really um, gave me a great opportunity to see other people's work. And um, it was great, Chrissy, but it was strange, you're right, because on obviously, I think we're all quite fast artists in general, like, because we try really hard to finish our work on a certain time frame so we can get it up or, or send it or do commissions or something like that. But when it's, uh, when you're painting outside and when other people are coming up to you and looking at your paintings and then you're under time pressure and you've got to carry all your uh, easel and everything everywhere and your equipment, it really is um, 
a lot of pressure and I found it quite stressful. I really want to get more into the habit of painting outside and um, painting under time limits because I guess I, I do tend to paint very fast actually, but it's just that um, painting a new subject that's not just from my brain, for example, uh, painting a new subject in front of me. It, yeah, it is hard, Chrissy, I agree. And I've seen so many other people do it, but having, and I have painted little things like on a, like sitting on a bench and in my sketchbook, for example, or like little paintings, but to do a larger scale painting when people are coming up to you. And I was sitting in a park, which was next to the venue. And um, this guy came and sat next to, next to me. And actually, yeah, so I actually thought that it was quiet there. <laughs> and there are a couple of other really nice artists also painting there. And this guy came and sat next to me and then he, he was obviously like getting wasted or something so he was sitting there drinking champagne and kept commenting on my painting but it was taking it like it was taking up all my like he was taking up all my attention because I was trying to focus and he kept saying things like oh um you know making really silly drunken comments <laughs> and I couldn't move because I had to finish the finish the work obviously so it was really difficult then <laughs> to continue it was just bizarre the whole thing was so bizarre and I think finally he got fed up and left but he, he was quite a posh drunk though because he was obviously drinking champagne and that's quite a you know that's a posh drunk really um <laughs> I know exactly silly drunk like interrupting but um because it wasn't like, because with the other artists, when they came over and had a look at my work and we got chatting, that was really nice. But when it's like some silly drunk, you're sort of like, oh, God. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so and then sort of at one point I was getting attacked by wasps as well. <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but they came out. And then there was another, I had a pigeon attack also. So there were several different um, elements to contend with. But, it, you know, I got there in the end. The painting, my painting, I didn't, I wasn't particularly happy with. Like, I felt I could have done it so much better. But I feel like we will learn from these things, don't we? Like, it's good to just see. I know how, how crazy. So I think we see, we learn from each experience. And um, I definitely think I'd be more confident next time. So I think you just got so stressed out by the whole situation and worrying about lots of tiny little aspects of it when in actual fact all that was really necessary was just to create a really nice painting <laughs> like I shouldn't have stressed out about you know, I was worried about the shadows and whether I was getting um, capturing the light properly and um, that I was uh, representing London properly and getting uh, all the elements of London in there and I don't think I should have really worried so much about those things I should have just gone with um, what I felt like painting really and just hoped for the best <laughs> I think that's what a lot of other people did and I think their paintings came out probably better than mine so yeah it was still a great experience though I definitely recommend it if anyone has one near them because they do tend to like sort of travel around the country I believe um <laughs> yeah. well wasn't it you know I saw the other day there was this YouTube video about uh, Van Gogh in one of his paintings they found a grasshopper and I found that so funny because obviously he was painting outside and um, he must have had so many experiences where he get attacked by some kind of flying beetles there was a literally flying ants at one point and all kinds of weirdness and I think it's especially with England because you know that whether you if it's a good day you'll get attacked by all kinds of weird insects um, and pigeons every time other pigeons uh, and some drunks perhaps if you're in a park <laughs> but also um I have to confess there were so many lovely people though that came up to me but um also if it's raining or like a bad or like a bad day weather wise then you'll get attacked by basically uh, you know the like the wind and I was surprised that the wind didn't didn't destroy my work because there was even though it was so hot there was also suddenly like a massive gust of wind <laughs> and the guy was just crazy but um it was a great experience I do highly recommend it if anyone gets a chance I'm just going to show you guys what the painting looks like so far I actually haven't really finished it. I'm going to um to maybe either do another live stream to finish it or just finish it and then like I might make another video about it um and I just thank you guys so much for joining me. I will get my live stream properly sorted out next time so that um, 
I will have a proper video that fills the entire screen, not just like a sliver. And thank you so much to everyone for joining me. A wonderful Chrissy and Lil, and I'm just scrolling up so I can see everyone else who came. And there was Marco, and there was, we had, oh gosh, goodness me, some more people up at the top as well. And we had Kima, we had Santi, we had so many lovely people and, um, yeah, I will sort it out. <laughs> Thanks, Chrissy. Oh, you're so lovely. And have a wonderful day. Lots of hugs to you too. Take care. And now I'm going to have to figure out how I how to turn this live stream off, by the way. <laughs> my, my, maybe it will never turn off. I'll just be sitting here for hours, you know, like staring at my painting. Oh, I should put on some like classical music in the background. But thank you guys so much. Big hugs, lots of kisses. And I'll see you guys very soon, hopefully with a much better setup. Take care, guys. Take care. Thank you so much, Lil.